Keynes was arguing, uh, Keynes was a mathematician by, by uh, training, actually, and he made a big deal of the difference between risk and uncertainty. Risk is when you play roulette. You know every possible outcome and the odds of every outcome. So mathematically, you know the future. Mathematically, in terms of prob uh, probabilities, you know what's going to happen. You don't know which exact one's going to happen, but you know, what can, you know what can happen and what the odds are, right? So, so roulette is risky. It is not uncertain. Uncertain, Cain said, he said, in the real world, we face uncertainty, not risk. And the problem is that we don't have all the probabilities. We don't know what's necessarily going to happen. And that he decided, that he thought was very significant. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about that. Um, <clears throat> what he was arguing with him in particular was the, the uh, common approach of the neoclassicals to assume that people had all the information. Hey, remember that from the Austrians? That was also something they objected to, uh, and in relation to uncertainty, although they define it a little differently. And they said, look, uh, if we're assuming that the entrepreneur, when undertaking the investment decision, which Keynes thought was key, if we're assuming they have all the information, and uh, that, you know, that they know all the possible future outcomes and all the uh, uh, odds, it makes it much easier to analyze mathematically, but it also makes it useless because that's not the way the real world works. You end up with an explanation of investment, an investment, again, physical investment, building factories and stuff, again, an absolutely key component of private sector spending in Keynes. He says, you end up with very stable forecasts uh, and very stable investment. And yet, did you know that there is not an element uh, or a component of GDP that is more unstable than investment? And Keynes is like, in fact, in reality, investment spending is very unstable. And you know what the difference is? If you plug this into the model instead, you get a different answer. You get something that looks more like the real world, is what Keynes was arguing. So, let me explain that to you. Uh, this is the best explanation I've ever come up with. If it's really bad, then imagine what it would have been like if you'd heard the earlier ones that weren't as good. Uh, but this is the explanation I came up with a couple semesters ago that I thought would be much more significant to you as a student. Um, here's the deal. I, I want to contrast for you what decision making is like under risk versus under uncertainty. And I want to create a situation that you would really care about. So, what I'm going to say is, uh, maybe I'll turn the camera down here. Uh, what I'm going to say is that, um, uh, uh, okay, uh, TCU has a new rule, let's say. Hey, I think this would be a big moneymaker myself. Sorry, I'm checking my email here. I had a student who needed a hold removed, and I'm seeing if that got done. Uh, not yet. Okay. All right. So, let me move the laptop out of the way. Um, let's say that TCU came up with a new policy. I'm going to aim the camera down here where at the end of the semester, I think this would be very popular, at the end of the semester, people can go over to the registrar's office, plop down $1,000, and roll a die. And hey, let me put my little key over here right next to it. Uh, maybe I should write this with one of these markers here. Oh, well, not the marker that doesn't write. Yeah, that one's not so great either. Sorry, I mean, you know what purple never lets us down, does it? Uh, it doesn't here either. Okay. Okay. Here's the deal. You plop down $1,000 and you roll a die. And if you roll a one, you've got an A in that class you're taking right now. You know, whichever one you, you put up for it. And presumably you'd be trying for classes where you're making D's and F's, right? And I think this would be really popular in fall semester when you're facing going home and seeing your parents and having them find out that you failed something. So, again, you have the opportunity to go to the registrar's office and you can say, um, I, I'd like to try for uh, Contending Perspectives, uh, Section 05. Um, and then you write your check for $1,000. Don't put it on a send home. I don't think that would work. But write your check for $1,000. And then the registrar comes out with a tray. Let's see. Here's, here's going to be my tray, I guess. And the tray has four dice on it. And the registrar says, pick whichever die you want. All right? And this die has six sides. This one, I believe, is a 12. Yeah, that one has 12 sides. I don't know if you can see that 12 or not. Yes, you can. 
this is a 10-sided die, although the 10th face has zero on it, but we'll count that as a, as a 10. And this one is actually 20-sided. Where's the 20? There it is, right there, 20-sided die. Why do I have all these dice? Because I'm really cool and play things like uh, a role-playing games. Um, so, we got a six-sided die, 12-sided, 10-sided, and 20-sided. You've just plopped down $1,000. You really, really don't want to go home with a bad grade. Which die do you select? Which die do you pick from the tray? Oh, six-sided, right? Hey, let's see what I get. Hey, I got an F. <laughs> so, and also, uh, another aspect of this game I was th when I was thinking about this is like, okay, but you can play as many times as you want. Think of what a moneymaker this would be for the university, right? So you can play it as many times as you want. Now, a class costs four or $5,000, right? So once you're four or 5,000 in, but it also costs 15 weeks of your life. And it also costs being yelled at by your parents. It's like, heck, maybe people would pay up to 10,000. You know, who knows how much they would pay to try to roll the die and get a different grade. It's also probably not ethical, but that's okay. Uh, so a lot of stuff isn't ethical that makes money for us. Now. Now, not for TCU, of course. I meant, uh, well, probably for Baylor. Now, the, uh, so, well, okay, so what I, what I just did is a perfect example. Let's say I plopped down my $1,000, I rolled the die, I got a five. Well, shoot. I'm going to plop down another 1000 I don't want to go home with this F. Uh, and so now, which die do I select the second time? Here's the second run. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll the die a second time. I've got the 20, the 12, the 10, and the six-sided. Which one do I select this time? Well, the six-sided die, right? Oh, fell off the table. Oh, gosh. Things are not going my way. But this is working out great for the example. All right, so, all right, so I got to roll a third time, right? So I'm thinking, oh, shoot. Um, I'm in for 2000 What the heck? You know, uh, hey, I got all these student loans anyway, so I'm going to plop down another $1,000 and, and pick a die again. And the, you know, the, the registrar's office comes out with this beautiful uh, uh, cherry wood tray, and you hold it out here. Which die this time, um, student? And you say, well, this one again. I mean, you know, I still failed. Uh, that's, wait, I, got, I still failed. I still failed. Come on. Good Lord. Hey, I got a C. I'm done. All right, I'm out of here. All right, so anyway. All right, that's risk. That's risk, where you know all the possible outcomes, you know the odds of every outcome, that's risk. And notice that I didn't make any big changes in my decision making, and that I could really make a very rational choice, other than the fact that I'm terrified of my parents. Uh, oh, there was something stuck, on, oh, don't let the registrar's office do that. There was something stuck on the uh, six side, which meant that when it bounced there, it tended to bounce off of the, off of the six, and the six, of course, has an A on the opposite side. Um, so very clever registrar's office. Uh, but um, anyway, I, I didn't change my mind. I didn't see dra dramatic changes in my choices when I know it's that die every time. I don't care what happened last time. What happened last time, this is a world where the past doesn't have any effect on the future. Uh, let me ask you this. What if when I came into the room initially, some kid had just rolled this one and had rolled a one? Got an A. What choice would I have made? The sixth side, and I'm still making it. It's just because some stupid kid that's majoring in something not in economics picked the, 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 the um, ten-sided die. It doesn't mean I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick the six-sided. So other people's behavior has no impact on me. Previous rolls of the dice have no impact on me. That's the only rational choice ever. And Cain said, that's the problem. That's not the way it works in the real world. The way it works in the real world, he says, is more like this. The registrar's office comes in with two dice and two like boxes. I'm sorry, those are th th those are marker lids. Is all I had. Uh, two boxes, and for your thousand dollars, you can choose one of the dice, or you can choose the box. Now we're never going to tell you what you. We'll tell you what you rolled, and we promise not to change the die that's in there. But you don't get to know what it is just because you paid for it, all right? Because this is, a, this is a complicated world. This is a dangerous world. A world like the one where you're thinking about starting a new business. This is a scary world, all right? So firms are, are facing a world that looks more like this, is what Keynes is arguing. Uh, a frightening place where they do have some information. You've got some information, right? Uh, 
I know that this one's got six and that one's got 20 and I ain't never picking that one, all right? So as Cain says, where you have information, you'll use it the best you can, all right? I've got that one eliminated. But now I still got this, right? And, and bear in mind, by the way, I looked this up before I started doing this example in class. There are dice with up to 200 sides. And there are dice with two sides. That's actually called a coin. All right, so I, I started to pull a four-sided out of here. There, there's also four-sided dice. There's one. There's a four-sided die right there. Uh, so this could be a four-sided die. Could be a two-sided die. Could be a 200-sided die. I don't know what it is, all right? Uh, the world's a dangerous place. So, first thing you think to yourself is, why do you play the game at all? Why don't you just walk away? Well, because I don't want to go home with an F, is why I don't walk away. And, just like in Vegas, you tend to over, uh, overstate your own um, odds. That, as Keynes worded it this way, he said, any rational person wouldn't play this game? Any coldly rational person. But we're not coldly rational. We're rational enough to get rid of the orange one. But we're not coldly rational because a coldly rational world would have no investment. Homo sapiens have what he called animal spirits. A tendency to action rather than inaction. A tendency to say, what the hell, I think I can make it work. Why do three quarters of all small businesses fail? Because people said, what the hell, I think I can make it work. I'm different than everyone else. Which is really kind of encouraging about Homo sapiens. Um, but it also means that we have this you know, volatile behavior that I'm going to explain here in just a moment. So, let's say you come into the room, you eliminate the orange die, you've written your check for $1,000, uh, and now you're deciding what to do. I think probably people would initially go with the die they can see. I don't know. It's going to vary from person to person. But let's say I had the kind of luck I had a minute ago. I rolled a couple of times. Might I shift to a different one? I'm in for 2,000. I'm going to roll it a third time. Might I shift to a different one? I might not. But I might. And remember, before, before, that was never a consideration. Before, there was never any thought that anyone will possibly uh, change die. Now, at least it's on the table. And furthermore, not only is it on the table, but if when I just walked in, some kid had selected this one and got an A, am I tempted to select this one now? Of course I am. Other people's behavior is now affecting me. Now we can have things like bandwagons and panics and, and, and booms because what other people are doing is affecting my choices now because the world is scary and complicated, but I'm going to make it work. But I can go from being all in to let's get the heck out of here in a way in this world that doesn't happen in this world. In this world, people can panic. People can say, crap, what the heck am I doing here? I don't even know what these two boxes are. Uh, changing your choices back and forth as you try to get that A. You're, in, you're into this thing for $4,000 now, and you're thinking, God, I can't walk away after $4,000 with the same F. I've got to do something else, right? So Cain says that's the way the real world works. With uncertainty, fundamental uncertainty, um, not with risk. And he thought that was absolutely critical to model economics uh, as if that were true. To model the investment decision in particular as if it were true that people don't have all the information. Now, by the way, uh, with this definition of uncertainty, one cannot be more or less uncertain. Because either, either uncertainty exists or it doesn't. Because uncertainty, by this definition, simply means we don't have all the information. All right? we, don't, we don't know what two of the dice are. So either we have all the information or we don't. So either there's uncertainty or there's not. We do have different levels of confidence, which he was also big on. That We need to talk, to talk about the levels of confidence people have have a huge impact on the choices they make. He also talked a lot about the stock market. He was a big stock market player. And you can probably see how this would feed into all that. So, so this is why he thought fundamental uncertainty was so important that it created the same sort of uh, modeling investment using this creates the same sort of instability that we see in the real world. And so that's and he also thinks the economy is unstable, and that's why, right? That's a big part of why it's unstable right there.